Good evening. My name is Susan Wilbanks. I'm one of the worship leaders at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Seattle, and I'd like to welcome you to evening prayer for Wednesday, July 1st. If you're following along in your Book of Common Prayer, we'll be beginning on page 115. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And now, turning to page 116, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now, turning to the top of page 118, we will pray together, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Amen. This evening's psalms are Psalms 128, 129, and 130, which you will find on pages 783 through 785 of your prayer book. We will pray them together. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion, and may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. And continuing to Psalm 129. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, let Israel now say, Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowmen plowed upon my back and made their furrows long. The Lord, the righteous one, has cut the cords of the wicked. Let them be put to shame and thrown back, all those who are enemies of Zion. Let them be like grass upon the housetops, which withers before it can be plucked, which does not fill the hand of the reaper, nor the bosom of him who binds the sheaves. So that those who go by say not so much as the Lord prosper you. We wish you well in the name of the Lord. And Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins.
A reading from the book of Numbers, chapters 22, verse 1 through 23, verse 12. On the next day, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamath Baal, and from there he could see part of the people of Israel. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build me seven altars here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. Balak did as Balaam had said, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your burnt offerings while I go aside. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me. Whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a bare height. Then God met Balaam, and Balaam said to him, I have arranged seven altars and have offered a bull and ram on each altar. The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and this is what you must say. So he returned to Balak, who was standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. Then Balaam ordered his, uttered his oracle, saying, Balak has brought me from Aram, the king of Moab from the eastern mountains. Come, curse Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. How can I curse what God has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? From the top of the crags I see him, from the hills I behold him. Here is a people living alone and not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the dust cloud of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright and let my end be like his. Then Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I brought you to curse my enemies, but now you have done nothing but bless them. He answered, must I not take care to say what the Lord puts into my mouth? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For this evening's canticle, please turn back to canticle number nine on page 86 of your prayer book, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the, the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, in this section of the book of Numbers, Balak, the king of Moab, has called upon a prophet named Balaam, to come and curse his enemy, the people of Israel. Because Balaam's reputation as a prophet is that whoever he blesses is truly blessed, and whoever he curses is cursed. And Balaam doesn't want to be there. There's actually a whole entertaining story in the prior chapter where he you know, rides his donkey there and the donkey speaks, and it's all very kind of strange and interesting. But Basically, he knows that this king wants something from him that he cannot provide. The king wants his enemies cursed, but Balaam speaks for a higher authority, and he cannot and will not curse a people whom God has blessed. And this very ancient text seems especially relevant today. Speaking truth to power is never easy, but I believe it to be our calling as we as a church, a nation, and a world are confronting systems of racism, bigotry, and injustice, some of which we ourselves have benefited from and even participated in. But we dare not curse those whom God has not cursed, nor denounce those whom God has not denounced. And if you will now turn to page 120 of the prayer book, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Then, continuing to suffrage A, show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing for joy. Give peace, O Lord, and all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who created us in your image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it, help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I now invite your, your prayers and thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. I pray for all of us as we embark upon the second half of a year that is already so marked by disease, suffering, and strife. Give us strength, hope, and courage to be your light in a struggling world. Now let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom on page 126 of the prayer book. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining in this prayer and have a wonderful evening.